Okay, I see something that looks very 1970s. I'm thinking it's probably an owl. I'm not even sure what this piece is. So let's pull it out and see what, whoa, this is big. All right, we are back at Goodwill. Let's do some thrift shopping. Let's see what we can find for vintage. This here, absolutely beautiful. I love it. They're asking 15 for that. I finally found my first pair of Lucite candles. I have never seen these before in person. They're asking $15 for them. I don't understand the appeal of them. They are acrylic, so you can't actually melt them down. I know people like them for decor. Even at $15, I probably still could have picked them up and stand to have made $10, $20, maybe $30 on them. I think the gold flakes sell for a little bit more, but I wanted someone local to pick those up and enjoy those. So if you caught my last video, you would have seen that they are doing a really cool sale on furniture, $3 for furniture on Fridays. So I was looking at this store as well. These are kind of neat. I like the looks of them, they're good size. The small ones were $4, the larger ones were $2. I'm not quite sure how the math worked on that, but I did end up getting those large ones. Excellent storage. I saw these books hanging out underneath that car. I was curious what they were. I'm so glad I looked. These are vintage Christian children's books dating from 1967. Some go up to 1971. These were fantastic and only 95 cents a piece. I was very happy to find these. This is cute. I don't do a lot with plush, but I was definitely drawn to this. I'm trying to figure out if it's a strawberry or tomato. Looks like it says tomato on the tag there. Someone marked 1998 on it, so maybe it's not as old as I was thinking. It looked kind of like 1970s to me. Check out these eyes. Little googly eyes. <laughs> it's still a super fun plush. Here is the infamous Beanie Baby. <laughs> I think they're really fun. My kids actually enjoy playing with them. I don't get them for collectible reasons, but they do enjoy them. I was showing this one to my husband, and he actually said he used to have that one as a kid. And he even remembered that its name was Snort. He was checking the tag here, saying, I think it's Snort, and he was right. <laughs> Snort. That makes me want to buy this for you. You're like, I have this as a kid. Ooh, a state souvenir. Kingman, Arizona on Route 66. $5. Looks pretty new. I tend to try to just go with the more vintage ones, but I do really like that still. It's a darling little cross stitch. This butterfly dish caught my attention, you know, loving 70s like I do. This is actually a Jeanette glass butterfly candy dish. They were asking $5 for it. This would have originally had three, maybe four little butterfly dishes, little smaller ones that would have came with it or been able to be sold alongside it. What a stunning amber plate. Look at the detail on this. They're asking 10. Nice beautiful diamond cut. This is a really stunning piece. Nice serving platter. Love the color to that. I actually have one of these lemonade decanters. Absolutely love it. They were asking $10 and I wasn't willing to pay that to pick it up for resale or even to pick it up for myself considering I already have one. That's basically what you're going to be able to sell it for on eBay. It's going for about, you know, maybe a little less than 10 up to $14. So I couldn't really do much with that. Who's been with me long enough to remember when I picked up the same exact set? I was very happy to come across these because I wanted another sugar dish to put brown sugar in. So that was really exciting. I really didn't need one for coffee. I was thinking about still grabbing it, but I didn't want to just get it to get it, you know? Are you guys seeing anything that's catching your attention? This panda plate was kind of cute. 
not seeing a whole lot. I'm really not picking up the glassware too much these days. I do like this. This is an Anchor Hawking two-piece chip and dip set. They're asking $10. These unfortunately don't resell for very much. It is missing the attachment metal hanger as well. And even the ones with the metal hangers only go for about $20, $25. I've been really drawn to the brown transfer wares lately. This is a beautiful Royal Wesley bowl. Kind of on the small side, it's two dollars. I was thinking about picking it up, but you know, I wasn't quite sure what I would use it for. This little bowl, I was trying to see if I might want it to make my sourdough. I think I want something a little bit larger than that though. These were kind of interesting. I was intrigued by these because they had a really neat look to them. They are an Italian spatterware put up by Stovit or Stovit. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. They're only asking $10. I did end up setting these in my cart for a little bit and then I kind of took them apart and overlooked them and I did see some damage on them. So I actually ended up passing on them. It was unfortunate. If they were in good condition, I definitely would have picked them up. They were really fun. They probably would have went for $25 a piece or so. Oh, Falls Graph. I don't know why so many poo-poo on the Falls Graph. I think it's actually really beautiful. USA made pottery. It's so timeless. I really enjoy it. I hope people start liking it again. It's a nice little plate or tray. Pretty transferware. Is it like colonial times? Made in the USA. Five dollars. It's really beautiful crazing in this. I don't normally like crazing, but this is, you know, showing the age well. I'm seeing something up on the top shelf here that I like. Some vintage carolers. I've been really drawn to these lately. I've been thinking about collecting them and putting them out for my Christmas decor. I used to do the Santas a lot, but kind of moving away from that. And I kind of like something a little more classic like this. It does have that little chip on the hat. It's not too major though. It's such a fantastic piece. And I would just be keeping it for myself. I feel like a lot of resellers will do that. They don't mind picking up the things that are chipped for themselves, right? But you don't want to pick them up to resell chipped. Some people don't mind it, depending on the item. But I really try not to. And these are fun. I love the colors to them. There's some significant craze in the glaze. Made in Japan. Are these Hummels? They, I'm not super familiar with Hummels. They're trying to be Hummels if they're not Hummels, right? I think Hummels are typically marked, but I don't know. They're very beautiful, though. It's kind of castle. I'm not sure where that is. I guess it says France, so it's kind of interesting. Avon piece, $10 on that. It is nice that it's all together. You'll typically find those without the stopper or the basin. A little rogue salt and pepper shaker tree missing its shakers. It's looking for his lost shaker of salt and pepper. <laughs> I find dolphins all the time here. I'm not sure why. It must be souvenirs from Florida. People going on vacation. I'm not really understanding this plate with the two rocks on it. Maybe you can explain it to me. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're supposed to be doing with that. <laughs> Aw, it's kind of interesting, the two little nuns. It's kind of fun. I love this piece so much, but oh boy, is it ever heavy. I would never ship this. It's so great though, the country store. 
I mean, it's so heavy, I'm even afraid to hang it on my wall. And I really like this. So I really hope someone came along and got that. So beautiful. I love that piece. Back to these guys. Do I want them? I think, I think I'm going to grab the little choir family. It's just so great. I love the muted colors to it. At the very least, I could take a gray marker and just fill that in, and I don't think it's going to be that noticeable, honestly. Now, this is such a fun bank. It says Costa Maya, Mexico on the front of it, and if that signature wasn't on the front, I probably would have snagged this. It just seemed too specific, you know, on a bank, and, you know, I believe it's a beautiful Talavera-type piece, so... It's unfortunate if they would have had it on the bottom, but the face just seemed like a really weird place to put that. This is a Bernstein bear figurine. Have you guys ever seen such a thing? I never even knew this existed. I always enjoyed those books as a kid. Speaking of Bernstein bears, have you guys heard about the controversy on the spelling of it? There's this whole thing where people remember it being spelled one way and it's actually spelled a completely different way than they thought. Leave it down in the comments how you think it was actually spelt. If this is a fun little boat, like a pirate ship, made in Hong Kong, I believe that said, $2. It did have some damage to the metal, which is why I was hesitant to pick it up. It was double-sided, so it has like dimension to it. It's a really fantastic piece. This side had even more damage. I'm wondering if that would have mattered, but I don't know why I'm drawn to this little Bernstein bear. <laughs> I mean, I know why, because I always enjoyed the books, but I just had never seen it before. I'm not even sure what it's worth. I might might be uh, taking a loss on that, but it was just fun. It's always fun when you can find the little figurines in the original box. It's pretty neat to see. Ooh, a state souvenir. You guys know I love these. This is a really pretty one. Unfortunately, it's quite damaged. I don't know, some gnarly looking rusty stain there. It's pretty scratched up, but that's a cool piece. I wish I was in better condition. Definitely would have took that if it wasn't all scratched up. It's kind of a nice little figurine unusual to just have it all white. Goodness, look at this little picture frame back here. How precious is that? New baby. That's so cute. Oh, there's a giant crack in the corner. That's so unfortunate. What's this say? Made in Korea? $5. That's really precious. I'm so sad about that crack. I would have took that for sure. Okay, the eyelashes on this bunny. Can you even? Look at the ears. The ears are just as big as the bunny. This is kind of a fun little set of courting wear. This pattern is called Tribal Spirit. I've never come across that before in the wild, so that was fun to see. A couple of nice little earthenware bowls. Great colors to those. Not seeing much else in this aisle. This is a fun little set. I believe they are all Norman Rockwell pictures on the mugs. I'm only asking $5. That's pretty good. Is this like Ray Dunn or something? Magenta is isn't that one of the older ones? I'm not really versed in Ray Dunn stuff. You know, it's super popular for a while. I'm not sure that it does as well as it used to. Oh, the little puppy, so cute. Four dollars. That's a stamp on the bottom. Made in China, really? This looks so like a Japanese piece from the like 50s and 60s. That's surprising. A little mic piece. Hmm. Interesting. It's 
Gotta be old, though. Okay. This is super fancy. Only $5 for this toilet paper roll holder. I've never had a toilet paper roll holder this fancy in my entire life. But I do now. <laughs> I actually end up picking this up. I'm going to install it in my bathroom. Is that a little milk glass penguin? This is a really beautiful piece. Definitely had a quality to it, even though it was more modern. I was considering getting it. It was a great subject matter. It was a candle holder on the side, which is nice. It had this little chip at the back of it, which kind of deterred me. I haven't seen these in forever. The brown bag cookie molds. They have a little ghost. Perfect for this time of year. Two bucks on this guy. And then they have this little kitty cat as well. It's got some funky kind of stains going on in it. And they were $4 for this one. I'm not sure why. A little older, I guess. Let's check out the pictures. See something, some kind of cross stitch back here. It's falling behind the shelf. Let's see how this is going to go. How is it down there? Oh, it's going to come to the bottom now. Okay. I'm going to need two hands for this. Alright, that was a little complicated to get out, but I knew it was going to be cute. I was missing a couple of little nubs on the frame, but that's not serious. Let's see what the price is. Two bucks. What? I'll take that for two dollars. Be some needlework down here too. It's like busted glass here. Love loves an open door. It's kind of cute. That's nice. J. McDonald Henry. I think it's a print though. Another print. It's nice. Thirteen dollars each. Oh goodness. That's why I don't like looking at these. I try to glance and only do it if I see something of interest. I actually really like this three-piece set of wooden, like, nautical decor. They're really cool. They were asking $10 for them, but I think I can at least double my money on these. A lighthouse stuff today. What's Quaddy Head? Little bunny family. Oh, look at this. I'm glad I looked. I almost gave up looking. It's adorable. I'm scared of the price, but let's see how much it is. It's only $5. Awesome. It's great. beautiful photo. $13. Got a horse picture down there, but... What is this? What is that? This is too complicated to get at. <laughs> I love the colors on this. It's a really unique look. The closer we come to God, the closer we come to each other. It's a nice little cross stitch here as well. Always enjoy sifting through the section. I never know what I'm going to find. This is another one of those, is it a spoon holder? I'm not sure. It's almost a little bit bigger than that. Someone had told me the other day that People have been using those to hang dried herbs, so I really like that idea, and I think I'm going to pick one up the next time I see one. 
why am I so drawn to this piece? I'm not even a cat person. It has to be the bright colors. It's handmade. I think it's like a little plant stand. I'm not sure what the little clear spot would be for in the middle. I'm not sure if it's supposed to go up that way. It looks like it's missing, like it would have had a tail. I wonder if there's something like solar and you could put the tail on it and the tail would wag. It's really cute and I'm considering picking this up to resell. I'm still trying to figure this out. I think it's supposed to go this way and you put a plant on it, right? I just see someone using this in their garden or on their porch. It's very kitschy, a one-of-a-kind piece, I would imagine. I love the colors to it. I spied my colors down here on the bottom shelf. Thought I was going to have something good, but it's just some, like, Halloween paper. I'm not even really sure what it's supposed to be for, but it was a pack of Halloween stuff. I was a little disappointed. <laughs> I thought it was going to be some good 1970s stuff. This is kind of a fun piece with a little wooden shoe. You don't typically see it with a boat on top, so definitely a first time I've seen that. It's kind of a neat little, I guess it's a desk piece. I'm not really sure what this is for. It was handmade. Kitchen prayer. Is nice. Look, there's a little gingerbread man. I love all the detailing to it as well. And very fun. There's a little rooster on the teapot. Love that. I'm so cute. Two dollars. Absolutely taking that. Something I've always wanted to learn how to do is sew, and I thought these were absolutely stunning. I believe they are to store thread on, and the woodwork on this is just so great. What kind of game is this? Throw, throw, burrito. I mean, I guess. I mean, people are smacking each other with tortillas now, so I guess you can make a game out of anything. <laughs> How great is this book? It is a children's book, but I just think it's a lot of fun. I love living books like this. I was finding some really great fall books for homeschool. I'm not really doing the Halloween thing, but my kids love the like the little old lady who swallowed the fly and stuff like that, so I think that I might enjoy that one. But yeah, I'm trying to not get the Halloween type books, but look at more for fall. Apples and pumpkins, this one looks good. A little Halloween in it, but mostly just about fall. Not bad. They have two of those corduroy books. <laughs> Lots of Halloween. Going on a leaf hunt. That one's probably gonna be good. And another corduroy book. I don't know what it is with me and plush today, but I'm so drawn to it. But I mean, this guy, how can you resist him? He's so fun. It looks like it's some kind of a vintage Hawaii piece or I don't know how old it is, but I'm going to take a chance on it. I'm always keeping my eye out for vintage towels and usually I look for the fringe. This one caught my eye and I was like, I don't know, I'm pretty sure that's older. And sure enough, it was. It was mainly USA. Okay, I see something that looks very 1970s. I'm thinking it's probably an owl. I'm not even sure what this piece is. So let's pull it out and see what... Whoa, this is big. Let's see what we're working with. Okay, it's really long. Let's lay it on the floor. <gasps> it's a grandfather clock. Oh, there's a little kitty cat. That's adorable. Is it just supposed to be like a wall hanging? Or is an actual rug you're supposed to put out? Because I'd be afraid to like walk on it. It's so pretty. This is definitely the find of the day. I collect this stuff and I'm not much of a lamp person, but it's very hard to walk away from this. It's a beautiful 1970s splatterware lamp and there's one little minor issue at the back. 
it's really not that serious. Four dollars. I mean, I wish it was like orange and yellow, but I ain't mad at it. So a little recap of what I picked up today. I did pick up that set of three wooden nautical signs. They're in great colors. They're asking $10 for these, and I do believe I can get $20 to $30 for the set. So I think that will be good. Fantastic colors. Nautical does really well in my area. So those are really fun. So this is something I plan to keep for myself. I just thought this was absolutely gorgeous. It's in my favorite color, brown, and I love the attention to detailing around this. The little gingerbread man, all the pots and pans, the little rooster on the teapot. So very me. So this was only $2. It's actually not wood. It's kind of that like burwood kind of plastic. And we've got like some grapes and cheese and bread up here, some fruit. A trivet on the trivet. <laughs> I love this piece a lot. So this I picked up as a set of two for $4. We have the little Berenstein bear. I did not know that this was a thing. So this is marked 1983, made in Taiwan, Ebeling and Roos Company. I've never heard of that. I'm interested, I assume there's more Berenstein bear figurines out there, but I've never seen them. I've looked them try to look them up. I didn't see anything. She needs a little bit of a bath. <laughs> She's a little dusty. She was sitting on somebody's shelf for many years, it looks like. And yeah, I just thought that was really fun. I'm not sure what this guy is. He does rock. <laughs> and oh, it's a home cow bear. So usually the home cow figurines came in a set of three. So I'm assuming he has a couple of people that go with him. But you know, it's something I might just try to sell in the live sale. But I don't know. I just thought it was really fun. I like to pick up different things that I've never seen before. And I picked up a plush. I got the little funny pineapple here. It was marked Hawaii at the bottom, which leads me to believe it's a souvenir piece from Hawaii. But how great is that? It does have like a little flower up there that you would typically find on a lay. What did I pay for this? this tags all faded. $2. It was $2 and it's just so fun. Who wouldn't want to like have that sitting on their desk or on their couch? It's just, you know, a good way to get a smile in the morning. So colors are great. I just thought it was really fun. And yeah, I'm interested in trying out reselling plush. So we'll see how this little guy does. And speaking of plush, I had to get this for my husband. He told me he had it as a child. He even remembered the name that it was called Snort. So I did pick this up just to give to him and I just thought it would be a fun little memory and memorabilia for him. He said he used to play with it all the time. So, I mean, how can you resist? <laughs> and these actually, I looked up comps on these just out of curiosity and their prices are all over the place. And there's some that are going from pretty high money. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. So maybe it's something you guys want to look into, but I don't know, I thought it was interesting, but this is just something we are keeping as a little nostalgic memory for my husband. <laughs> da bunny, da bunny. <laughs> I got this little bunny. The eyelashes, the ears, I mean, what's not to love about this piece? So cute. And I didn't even realize, but it's a bell. Isn't that kind of unexpected? I thought that was really cool. I don't think it's a, you know very loud bell by any means but it's interesting it is a bell but I just think it's so adorable it's probably be a live sale item as well might have to wait closer to Easter but I might try it I might try it soon in the next live sale or two it's just so cute <laughs> it's not a price on this guy but I think they charged me two or three dollars and I was so excited to find this Anchor Hawk in 1990s canister. Like I said, I have one in coffee, sugar, and flour. And I'm not sure if there's a fourth one, but at the store they had coffee and sugar. And I wanted one more to put my brown sugar in. So 
you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be all set. I won't have to like decipher between them. I'm pretty sure I can tell the difference between, you know, the colors there. So <laughs> I think I'll be okay. It was marked $5. So a really good deal. I like the way they seal and I haven't had any issues with the air. So very fantastic. I like the look to them. I did pick up the one brown bag cookie art mold in the little ghost. I figured this would do pretty well. It was only $2 and you know, I think it'll go for about eight to 10. I don't think it's gonna be anything too serious, but you know, it could go up to 12 to 14 given the season, you know, seasonal stuff. Definitely does better when you're closer to the time and Halloween sells really well. So I wanted to try that out. The cat they had at the store had some like stains or I, I just didn't seem like they would come out. So I didn't end up grabbing that one, but I figured I would try this out. And this might be one of the weirdest things <laughs> I've ever thrifted. I never, well, we'll say I never thought I would thrift a toilet paper roll holder. And so it was $5 and I just love that it's a heavy duty metal, looks really fancy and, you know, definitely will give the bathroom a nice look to it. Ours is very underwhelming, so I think this is just a nice little touch. I mean, we have small bathrooms, so anything like this, a nice little statement piece to kind of give it more character, I think will be fantastic. I did end up getting the little caroling family. I absolutely love them. And I think I'm going to maybe do a small collection of these and kind of put them out for my Christmas decor this year kind of get away from the Santa Clauses and, you know, the typical stuff. And I just really like the idea of this. It's more simple. You don't really necessarily scream Christmas. You could keep it out and I really like it. So the chip is pretty insignificant and I'm pretty sure a gray marker is gonna make that go away, no problem. So I wasn't really concerned with that. It's quite the dapper mustache. <laughs> These are great. Is he standing in a chimney? What's going on here? Wait. What is happening? <laughs> what? He's, it looks like he's standing in a chimney. I'm not sure that aspect of it, maybe it's like a fireplace, but he'd be like in the fire, so. I don't know about that part. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It was $5 and it was made in 1989. Nice little hobbyist piece, which you guys know I love. Very happy with this. And then I got this hobbyist piece lamp as well. The nice, beautiful drip glaze. I don't typically do blue in my decor, but I do have a little bit here and there, little pops. So I think this will be okay in my living room. And it does have like a little bit of green and yellow, which helps it blend in pretty good. And my couch is blue, so I think that'll be okay. Now the top, I'm gonna have to figure out a shade for it and how it's going to attach on there. I think I might need one of those long metal things. I'm not sure what they're called and attach it to this part, but I'll have to figure that out later, what's gonna look good with that, but I was not gonna leave this behind. It was $4 and it just has this little tiny chip. It's basically a surface chip and I think I'll do the same thing. I'll try to find a marker that's about that same color blue and just kind of touch it up. So, you know, I'm not gonna sit there and be touching my lamp to feel for chips, you know, it's just something I'm keeping. And uh, that'll make it go away. So, very happy with that. Hopefully it won't take me too long to figure out a lampshade situation for it. I did end up grabbing the cat. It's a wooden handmade piece. They're asking $5 for it. I believe it's some type of a plant stand. I think it's supposed to go this way. I, I'm not certain what was supposed to be inside of here. It did appear like there was some kind of a tail mechanism and there's a plug here, so I wonder if you would have had to plug it in to make the tail wag or something. But I still think it's really cute on its own. 
I'm not really a cat person. Is it a cat or is it a bunny? Maybe it's a bunny. No, that's a cat, isn't it? It's a cat, right? Yeah, that's cat ears. I think it's a cat. <laughs> I just really love the colors. It's very kitschy. And I figured it wouldn't take too much work to kind of do something with. It could be kind of creative with it. I thought it'd be really nice on someone's porch as a nice little kitsch piece. Not necessarily having to put it outside. You could use it inside as a little plant stand. It's just a fun little whimsy thing to have. So I'm gonna throw it up on eBay and we will see if anybody is interested in it, I'll probably just throw it on auction because, I mean, I don't even know what to price this at. So <laughs> we'll see if anyone is even interested in this. But I thought it was a fun piece. And the adorable Jack and Jill picture. Now, the picture frame is really janky. It didn't take much and it kind of snapped off. So that's either going to have to be repaired or I might just find a new frame for it. But I'm not going to toss it in case it's hard to find the right size and I can always glue it and maybe uh, paint it or something if it looks too bad with the glue. But you can see, you know, now that the frame has fallen off, you can see how old the paper is. It's kind of eating away a little bit there at the edges. I mean, I, I don't even know what to age this at, but it's definitely an older piece. I plan to keep it. I was going to put it in my boy's room, but yeah. Got to do a little bit of mending to it. Fantastic piece. Very happy with that. The imagery is absolutely fantastic on it. Also got another vintage towel to add to my collection. This is a fun one. It's kind of a, I don't know how it's coming across on the camera, but it's like a, almost like a corally, it's more of like a corally like red than a peach, but it's an interesting little color there. And it has that kind of Aztec design. It is a Leshner made in the USA. So very, very cool. Happy with that. That's the first one I found that's older that doesn't have the fringe on it. So that was kind of interesting. <laughs> the next one I got was this Lord is My Shepherd cross stitch. I thought this was really beautiful. They were only asking five for that as well. And I love the brown. It's a nice a nice like muted kind of earth tone very relaxing kind of color that really this brown you can pair it with kitsch you can pair it with cottage you can pair it with farmhouse it really goes with everything and this is something i may be keeping or i might resell i have not decided yet i gotta think about where i'd put it I do really like that and for five dollars I was not passing this up really great piece this is one I am keeping I know for sure it was only two dollars I'm going to be adding it over on my little needlework cruel wall and I'm going to be rearranging that soon because I have a couple other pieces as well but so beautiful I love the colors to this and you know the green will help tie it in and the brown frame the colors aren't exactly my colors but I think I can make it work over there I just love these handcrafted pieces like this it is missing a couple of the little wooden knobs but I probably will just take these two out honestly it doesn't really bother me how it looks like that so that way it matches, <laughs> but I'm very happy with that for $2. It's gonna be a fantastic addition. And then there is this piece that I almost missed. I always try to check out the linen section and I was like, oh, that looks 1970s. And I was thinking it was an owl because this is basically what I saw. And I was like, oh, it's brown, it's probably an owl. And I wasn't exactly sure what it was. It looked kind of like a rug to me. So as you guys saw, I opened up in the store and it's a grandfather clock. It's kind of hard to open up here, but you guys can definitely see it in the video. There's the little kitty cat. There's that creature that I'm not that much of a fan of, but <laughs> it kind of blends in. You don't really notice it as much. And this was only $3. How fun. I I believe this would go on the wall. Do you, I can't imagine like using this as a rug and stepping all over that. It's just so beautiful. 
the amount of time that went into making that. It's one of those like canvas, you can see the clock there. It's one of those canvas rugs you kind of weave in. Very cool. So happy with that. That likely is not going to be resold because you guys know I love the 1970s things and I'll try to find a place for this. <laughs> there are those three large bins I end up getting for $2 a piece. Wait, there's four. Awesome. I guess I got four. That's even better. And these are just so fantastic to have on hand, whether I'm using it for toys or for the reselling stuff. I mean, you can use it in the kitchen, all kinds of uses for that. And two bucks is a fantastic deal, especially for that size. And of course, it wouldn't be a nesting haven video without some books. So I picked up these Christian children's books. Like I said, they range from 1960s to the early 70s. This one is 67. And yeah, these are fantastic. So I was very happy with those at only 95 cents a piece. We got the Fisherman's Surprise. It looks like they came in sets, so there is likely even more out there. So I guess I gotta start collecting these. I'm, I wasn't aware of this series. Very cool. More things to look out for. <laughs> and this is the water that caught on fire. I believe that's what it says. And this one is from 1969. Happiest Search. 1970. The Boy Who Gave His Lunch Away. 1967. The Strange Young Man in the Desert, 1971. So those were really great, and I'm excited to look out for the rest of them. And then I got a few fall books I was looking for for homeschooling. I was happy, I actually had a decent, decent selection there, and I just kind of quickly glanced. So we got the Apples and the Pumpkins book there. A little bit of Halloween in it, which I was trying to avoid, but not bad overall. It's kind of hard to avoid it too much with a lot of these books. The Little Old Lady Who Was Not Afraid of Anything. This one's probably gonna be more Halloween driven, but I thought it might be kind of a good, you know, storyline, so. I'll probably pre-read that. <laughs> the Biggest Pumpkin Ever. My kids will like this one because it has mice in it and they know mama's afraid of mice. <laughs> but, so mostly, about just growing the pumpkin, but again, a little bit Halloween, so it's really difficult to avoid it altogether. We're going on a leaf hunt. So, that one there as well. So that should pair well with some of our fall learning. We do like to do more seasonal stuff, obviously, with homeschooling. It's just a lot easier to go by the seasons and kind of celebrate all the things and learn about the things we're celebrating. Sharing the Bread, an old-fashioned Thanksgiving story. This was $6, which, you know, I typically won't pay up that much for a book at, you know, a, a thrift store. But I didn't really mind because this looked like a really wonderful book. And, you know, it's a simple in title, but the images are wonderful. And definitely not too much out there to teach my kids about Thanksgiving. So I thought this would be a really fun read for that. That is going to do it for my thrift haul today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what I picked up today that was your favorite, and yeah, make sure you're subscribed if you are not subscribed already, and we will catch you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs>